I was scared to death. The most scared I've ever been in my life. You are about to see real people. What the hell is going on here? Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. Something is here. Something is trying to harm us. When ghosts get physical. You could offer me a million dollars. I wouldn't go back into that place. This is not my imagination. Get out. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Survivor 3, uh, story number 5, Christine's Haunted Apartment, featuring Christine. I'll never forget when we moved in. Excited. It was a really nice place, um, very spacious. I was already envisioning how I was going to decorate it. It was a new beginning, and it was going to be our home for quite some time. I thought it was going to be so much fun moving to this big apartment building. I thought I was going to make so many friends. I thought it was going to be just a great time. But their excitement soon wore off when unexplained events started to occur. It was about three months after we moved in, and I'd hear a lot of, like, footsteps. I would hear footsteps running down the hallway. And then, like, a door slam, and then giggling. There would be footsteps that would go up and down our hallway in our apartment. Boom, 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 down the, down the hallway. And it would terrify you. Standing there, you'd think a huge man was coming. What was that? It's just next door, baby. OK. And I'd think, maybe the walls are thin, and I'm hearing something next door. Christine tried not to think about the activity until it could no longer be ignored. I heard this loud crashing in the kitchen and it just sounded like hundreds of plates just crashing to the floor. And I bolted up and ran to the kitchen. Cutlery's on the floor. The uh, plates are all over the floor. Every dish in my cupboard is on the floor. All the cupboard doors are open. The fridge door is open. And I was like, who is breaking into my house and doing this? I was still in denial that something paranormal was going on. In my experience, when paranormal activity is left and not investigated, just left by itself, it tends to become more intense. And the reason that it tends to become more intense is basically because you're ignoring it. Whatever it is that's there wants our attention. When we ignore it, it's kind of like a child who we continue to ignore. They're going to do something that's going to be completely crazy, completely out of the 
out of the moon, um, off the wall. So they're they're going to intensify whatever energies there are in their immediate area. Christine hoped the activity wouldn't get any worse, but then it started to focus on the things she loved most, her son, Sam. As time went on, I started to hear voices and they were coming from inside my room. I was just absolutely terrified. I ended up covering my face in my blanket to try to hide from them. The most common voice I heard was a boy about my age, and he would constantly ask me to come play with him. He almost looked like me. His hair was a little bit darker, and I couldn't really ever see his eyes. And I'd go check on my son, and, and I would ask Sam, you know, were you just laughing? Oh, no, Mom, that was David. He's laughing. I'd go, who's David? And he would go, well, he's the little boy that comes here sometimes. And I thought, OK, something's going on. There's something here that can't be explained. It soon became clear that the little boy's spirit didn't want Sam as a friend. I was in bed sleeping. The door swung open so hard that it hit the wall. And, and that kind of jolted me awake. And then I heard, Mommy. And I thought it was my son. And I just patted the bed behind me. And I says, did you have another bad dream, Sam? And I said, come to bed with Mommy. And then I could hear the footsteps creak, creak, creak across the wooden floor. And I could feel the bed pressing in, like weight was going onto the bed. And I rolled over to embrace my son, to calm him down. And then that's when David was saying that he wanted to kill my son and take his place in his body. Like, I just went into absolute panic. And I just, like, bolted dead out of bed. You know, where's my child? What did you do with my child? At that point, I thought he had carried through on his promise of getting rid of my son. Oh my God, I was terrified. Absolutely terrified. To her relief, Christine found Sam unharmed. But from that point on, Sam was tormented on a daily basis. My son started to become a big target for whatever was in that apartment. They tried to hurt him. They would throw things at him. They would wake him up and torment him. Things would go flying across my room, flying towards me. I'll never leave you alone people screaming at me, just inches from my face, yelling at me at the top of their lungs. He was losing sleep. He was suffering at school. He didn't know how to deal with what was going on. He was scared, terrified, screaming all the time. Everything that I would hear would make me jump, would make me cry, would make me scared. This happened for three years while we were living in that apartment. And it started to affect me. It started to make me think about ending my own life so that I could get away from it. And I was thinking about jumping out in front of a bus to try to escape the torment. It seemed the entity wanted to terrorize Sam to death. Christine McGee's son had his life threatened by a terrifying entity haunting their apartment. 
After three years of mental torment, the torture had become brutally physical. He was screaming for his life. He woke up literally hanging in his bed. When I woke up, I just, I was filled with so much fear. There's no way I could have gotten into that position by myself. I knew something had to have pulled me out of the bed. I don't remember anything from that. I just remember waking up and being scared. Well, a spirit may wish to do something physical to a human being, to exert their power or exert their energy or their force upon them, to let them know that I'm here, I mean business, and whatever you do, you're kind of powerless because I'm gonna do whatever I want to do. That was it. After I saw him being attacked in that way, that's when I decided that he needed to get to a safe place. I sent him away to my parents, and I just had enough. It had to stop. It, we had to go, or, or it was going to kill us. I believe that. Alone in the apartment, Christine became the focus of the torment. I was sitting on the couch watching TV, and uh, I hear footsteps behind me. It's almost like a very large man in work boots was coming up behind me. And then all of a sudden, these hands grab my feet. And I look down, and there's these hands wrapped around my ankles. He wasn't letting go. Whoever it was was not letting go. I screamed, and I pulled, like, yanked, literally yanked my feet out from his hands. And I was done. I wasn't sticking around anymore in that house. I'd had enough. I left the home. I left everything. I left all of my belongings. Took what I could carry in my arm. Took a few pictures of my son, clothes on my back, and left. Never, never went back. Never wanted anything to do with the place. It just, it destroyed us totally destroyed us. I think if we stayed, something bad would have happened. You could offer me a million dollars, I wouldn't go back into that place. And every time I drive by that building to this day, I shiver, I start shaking, and I just want to throw up because I just, I, I think it's still there. I believe it's still there to this day. Paranormal entities sometimes physically assault their victims so severely they're left battered, bruised, and afraid. But on rare and terrifying occasions, a physical attack by an evil spirit can be potentially life-threatening. Survivor 3, this is story number 9, Danielle's Haunting Marker. Yeah. Hey guys, we're in the back. Hey. Uh, Karen and I go uh, way back. We've been friends, well, I'd probably say at least 25 years. Oh, 
and we pretty much call each other every other day. When Danielle had some exciting news, it was Karen she told first. We're pregnant again. Uh, when Levi was um, about eight months uh, of age, we found out that we were actually pregnant with my daughter. And uh, just, um, we're just over the moon, really. Oh, um. You would have expected her to have been happy with, That's great. you know, adding another child to our family. Um, but for some reason, it didn't go over as smoothly as uh, we had anticipated. Karen's behavior was weird, but it was nothing compared to the confusing and frightening events that soon followed. So I started having nightmares, um, really scary nightmares. In some of my dreams, it was more our family was being attacked. It was um, a very dark, tall um, thing. I never could really tell what it was. I was never able to actually see any features on its face. He was uh, in a, a black heavy suit uh, with a black hat. It was almost like he was from another century. And I'd be, you know, kicking it, hitting it, um, everything that I could to push it away from us. Um, I'd scream at it, um, and nothing ever quite got it away from us. One night, Danielle's terrifying dreams became a waking nightmare. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I would see this figure at the end of my bed um, staring at me. I'd have this huge heavy weight on my body. Um, I couldn't actually move physically. I would try to scream, and I couldn't get anything out. Yeah, she said at first it would be at the foot of our bed or just inside our room, and then it started to be more towards her side of the bed. The figure conveyed a very, very scary, hateful uh, feeling, um, like it wanted to hurt me. I'd be really scared, extremely frightening, but it definitely just made you feel uh, very fearful for your life. I was fearful that um, that being or whatever was there was going to, to harm my son. Homeowner Danielle Lowe had been plagued by terrible nightmares. But then, the dreams became a horrifying reality. I was fearful that um, that being or whatever was there was going to, to harm my son. I mean, her fear was, was someone actually there? It felt that real to her. Shadow figures um, normally are malevolent. Soon, the shadowy figure was tormenting Danielle night and day. No matter what I was doing, I just always felt a heavy presence and just heaviness on my chest. There was no way to get it, get it away from me. It just always came with the sudden feeling that something was hanging over my shoulder, uh, watching everything that I did. I tried to leave the house a lot. I, I had told Karen that I was very worried about the safety of my children, um, and she sort of just slummed it off as if it was nothing. But Danielle was right to worry about the safety of Levi and her unborn child. My husband and I usually in the evening would watch TV together. So when we started to hear the footsteps in the spare bedroom, we thought, well, no one else is in the house other than us. And it almost seemed like it wanted us to know that it was there, because um, it just started to get more and more loud. The 
you would hear the rocking chair move a couple of times, and sometimes we would go into his room to check on him, and it would slowly be rocking. And it was just like someone had gotten up from it. The gentle movement of it settling itself. Nothing made sense as to why it was rocking. And at that point, you know, I'm not questioning anything anymore. There, there's something going on in his room. The next day, Danielle got a surprise visitor. Hey. Hi. We hadn't really spoken to Karen as much as we used to. And then when she had come by, there would always be some sort of um, negativity uh, brought into the house. And uh, we were both on our way up to the top of the stairs. With Karen around, the activity turned dangerously violent. As I went to turn, I just came plummeting down the stairs. I was pretty shaken up, and I was in complete shock, so it took a couple of minutes for me to realize, OK, I just fell down the stairs, and I'm pregnant seven months here. This could be really bad. Well, I definitely did not trip, and I definitely did not lose my balance. Uh, something had pushed me or willed me to fall down the stairs. You know, I felt sick to my stomach. Danielle was obviously in shock. She couldn't believe what had just happened, and then was obviously worried uh, about the baby. Um, are you OK? Um, it was what happened? I, I, I didn't, I didn't do anything. What happened? She just fell. I and don't know. And as soon as I fell down the stairs, Karen came running down the stairs saying, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I, I, I didn't touch you. I, I didn't touch you. Obviously, who would think that, right? You know, no person's going to throw someone else down the stairs. It was just odd that someone would be, would be saying that. I started to, to think that she possibly could be connected. Go. I knew that I hadn't fallen on my own accord down the stairs. So something is here. Something is trying to harm us. Luckily, no lasting harm was done to mother or baby. And soon after, Danielle and Rob welcomed their daughter, Lennon, into their lives. By contrast, Karen had completely disappeared. It was hard, because Karen and I were very, very close. So it was very uh, disappointing um, that uh, she wasn't there to, uh, you know, be a part of the happiness. Karen had gone, but the activity continued. All of a sudden, we heard a door close, and it was like a slamming door close. By this point, I'm an absolute believer that this is happening. This is not my imagination. That was the last straw for me. Um, I was just at my wit's end, and I knew for sure something was, was there, and I needed someone to come and to get rid of it. Fearing for the safety of their children, Danielle and Rob asked psychic medium Tammy Taylor for help. When I got to the house, you could see there was a sense of darkness. Danielle had this beautiful energy. Her family had this beautiful energy, but there was a lot of blackness. Um, and I knew right away that she had some sort of negative attachments connected to her. She was, she was scared. She knew that there was something in the house. Whatever it was, she wanted it gone. Concerned Danielle and her family were in danger, Tammy headed toward the source of the negative energy. She walked up the stairs, stopped on the stair that Danielle said she fell from, and said something bad really happened. It, it happened right, right here. I really feel it. After something had shoved expectant mother Danielle Lowe down her stairs, psychic medium Tammy Taylor had a troubling theory. And I could see that somebody had been pushed and that this dark entity had pushed Danielle on the stairs. So 
when she started to describe the figure, I, I didn't even know what to say. I sort of had the shivers at my back and the goosebumps, um, just because I, I knew that something definitely had been there the whole time. It takes a lot of energy for a negative entity to interfere within the physical, to be able to push somebody, to be able to push an object, to be able to push a person. This entity clearly had a lot of anger, a lot of strength, and a clear connection to Danielle. It was a very dangerous situation. An entity would want to push someone down the stairs uh, to give them a clear indication that they wish to cause harm. They don't want them to be there. They're powerful. They want to exert their force. Um, and by pushing them down the stairs, by doing something physical, it shows this person that they're there and they can do something. That's absolutely terrifying. It's not just that they're seeing things, they're actually capable of causing physical harm. The stairs wasn't the only place that Tammy sensed dark forces. She said that there was negative uh, energy in the son's bedroom. Um, that really alarmed me. Tammy sensed something else in Levi's room too. Danielle's son, a beautiful little boy, and he had his crib, and there was a rocking chair. And I knew immediately that there was a family member, that there was an uncle sitting in that chair, and he was watching over. He was protecting Levi from these negative entities that were in this house. It was a comforting feeling to know that, you know, someone was there protecting him, but at the same time, it was scary that, you know, this thing or being could have been there the whole time, and we didn't even know. Fearing that the spirit of Danielle's uncle couldn't protect the family against a powerful negative entity forever, Tammy decided to remove the shadowy figure. And I was standing beside the bed and I was cleansing. I, I started to see visions of these shadowmen. I knew exactly where they would stand beside her bed, terrifying her. I right away had asked her, why is it even here? What does it want? Tammy was stunned to discover why the shadowy figure was tormenting the family. I was given some visions of somebody who was close to Danielle. It was a female, and, and somebody had, Danielle had known for a long time who had a lot of anger issues, had a lot of control issues, and that brought in more negative energy, more negative spirits. And this shadow man was, was the product of that and was in Danielle's world and again, creating that fear, that discomfort and all those negative emotions. Um, and again, this was projected from someone in Danielle's life. And when I started to describe this person, Danielle knew immediately who it was. I was very, um, very shocked. I didn't really know what to think. Danielle's um, little girl had some past life connections to this parent. Her daughter had actually been somebody who had been very strong and was one of the few people that was able to get the upper hand with this woman. I don't think that Karen had any conscious feelings, but on some level, she would have seen that child as a threat. I have absolutely no doubt that the, that past life battle between the two was again coming to the surface in this lifetime. Tammy tried to remove the negative entity once and for all, but it wasn't going without a fight. Sometimes when you're dealing with negative entities, they'll do different things to get you to back off. They'll frighten you. In this case, they were saying to me, this won't work. You have no power here. And I just kept forging ahead with the work. As cliche as it sounds, it was like walking into the light. As soon as we went through that process, it was just like a door had opened to heaven. It was just so bright. The feeling of darkness had gone, and uh, it just was just a different presence in the house. 
that thing was not watching over me. And I still don't wake up to, uh, to bad nightmares or have that shadow man at the end of my bed. The sounds, the doors, the walking wasn't happening anymore. You go to bed every night thinking, okay, like you know, lock your doors and take care of your children and make sure everybody's safe. But then there's nothing there to protect you from things like this. Having just one paranormal entity that opens doors, moves objects, and physically harms the living can be a harrowing experience. But when a home has multiple spirits intent on causing physical pain and suffering, life can become unbearable. Survivors three, Roseanne's apartment, take one, Mark. I moved into my first apartment in uh, 1995. It was exciting. I was, you know, in my 20s, I was single. I had a new job. It was, it was a great time in my life. She was extremely excited and, um, you know, about being in a place on her own now. I didn't want her to move in the first place, but she was very excited. Roseanne soon discovered that her new apartment wasn't as perfect as it first appeared. There was one cold spot when you walked into um, the front you could almost see your breath. I would just feel, you know, chills up my spine. I thought it was a breeze coming through the front door. So how's the movie going? Good, good. I bet you. What's up? Roseanne Safani had just moved out of her parents' home and into her first apartment when she started to notice that something wasn't quite right. So how's the movie going? Good, good. I think. She was having a few issues with the electronics. Her lights would go out. And I had a new lamp that I just purchased. My lamp would flicker on and off. I just thought because I was new in the apartment building that um, that's why those things were happening. In fact, almost anything Roseanne touched stopped working. My curling iron just completely died. My television would flicker on and off. My computer wouldn't work. It was just bizarre. Like, everything I had electronic just kept going out. There was one particular incident when I bought my new blow dryer. There was a flame that shot out of it. It didn't catch fire, but there was a flame. I was just afraid now at this point because I thought something was going to harm me. There was something going on, and it just it scared me. Unable to find a rational explanation for the problems, Roseanne became fearful that something darker was at work. Paranormal.
paranormal entities can often play with things that are our energy. Because they are energy, they like to draw upon energy. So electric things, TVs, radios, hair dryers, anything that draws any kind of energy source, um, they tend to play with them. So they'll turn things off and on. That's a strong entity. It tells you a lot about the strength of that entity. It wasn't just the electronics. Soon, Roseanne began hearing and feeling disturbing things. I would hear these strange sounds. It was whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It was a, like a wavy, swooshing sound that would, it was very loud. So I would feel that someone was watching me. I would feel the presence very strong. So I heard the swishing in the hallway in my living room and in my kitchen, and the swishing sound became very loud. I did pray a lot, so every time I would hear a swishing, so I would grab my crucifix and I would say, Hail Mary. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother. I thought my apartment was haunted at this point. I was frightened. Oh God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Roseanne tried to carry on with her life until one incident proved too much. When I would take a shower, um, I felt very uncomfortable. I just felt like someone was always watching me. There was the steam from the shower. So the words help, H-E-L-P, appeared. It was horrifying. I just hurry up, got dressed, and got out of there as fast as I could. Too terrified to be home alone, Roseanne asked her mother to stay over, but that didn't stop the activity. I just remember how upset she was. I didn't want her to stay there. I wanted her to come back home. A mother does not want her child, no matter how old they are, to have to go through anything uh, of this nature. We were watching the baseball game. I heard that swishing sound again. So I said, Mom, see, this is what I'm talking about. That's the sound. And then it would stop. You know, I didn't know what to think. I was like freaked out myself. And we heard the cupboard doors in the kitchen opening and closing, and they were slamming. I saw the cupboard door open and shut, and there was no one there at all. I freaked out. It, that was unexplainable. <laughs> I suggested that she should have a priest come in to her apartment, and I just wanted her to come home. I wanted her out of that apartment. Against her mother's wishes, Roseanne stayed in the apartment. It was a decision she would almost immediately regret. I was getting ready for bed and I crawled in and I put my comforter over me. And all of a sudden I saw just like indentations on the bed that were um, happening up my leg always started on my feet, up my thighs, and then it would go all the way up to my head. Ever since she moved into her new apartment, Roseanne Safani had been plagued by troubling activity. 
But the haunting became physical when something unseen grabbed her while she slept. It felt like hands. There was a lot of anger. It was an angry type of movement. And I would be, you know, scared and just hope it would end soon. It was beyond terrifying. It was beyond words. You can't ever physically describe the fear you have when someone's touching you that you can't see. Roseanne's attack left lasting physical injuries. I couldn't figure out how could a presence that I can't see create a black and blue on my body. What's going to happen next? That was my fear. If I'm getting black and blues on my leg, what is this capable of doing to me? As a psychic, when I get touched, it's usually a spirit uh, validifying that I am here, I want you to, to talk to me. But when somebody who uh, doesn't understand what's happening and they're being touched, that usually means that they don't want you there. Uh, it's time that you need to get a professional in and have an investigation done and find out what's going on in your home. Whatever had attacked Roseanne wasn't finished with her yet. And it just sounded like a loud wind, a swishing sound. It was like a tornado of sound. It was like something just was on a rampage through the whole place. shaking. I wanted to get out. I literally was in my pajamas. I didn't even have shoes on. I just needed someone to help me. No longer able to endure the relentless torment, Roseanne called paranormal investigator Marianne Winkowski for help. I did a lot of work in those apartments. I bet there's 400 apartments there. I probably was there at least 75 times. I was a little more concerned for her apartment because of her black and blue marks. Marianne immediately sensed what was behind Roseanne's haunting, a spiritual doorway known as a portal. A portal is an energy opening. It's not made by a ghost. It is made by something very negative that happened. If there was a murder in the house, a suicide in the house, a very certain kind of spirit comes out of a portal. It's somebody that really did something bad when they were alive. She told me there were a couple of spirits in my apartment. One of them uh, committed suicide in my apartment. and one was an old woman who died in the apartment. There was an old woman who she said li liked to hang out in the kitchen, and she's the one who would play with my cupboards. I can see him, I see him as clear as I see a regular person, see their hair color, the clothes they have on. She was not your sweet old lady that just died and decided to stick around. She wanted help to cross over. Marianne explained that this was a residual haunting of a woman that previously lived in the apartment. And that she was harmless. Using her psychic abilities, Marianne helped remove the female spirit from the apartment. As soon as I create that light, I can watch them walk into the white light. When I can't see them anymore, I close the light, and they're where they need to be. Marianne then focused her attention on the male spirit. Using her psychic abilities, she was able to determine that it was he who watched Roseanne in the shower. and he who attacked her in bed. 
Worryingly, Marianne also sensed the male spirit was very powerful and wouldn't leave without a fight. Open the heavens! Get rid of the evil things! It was just a horrible feeling there. I felt like a weight was sitting on me. A lot of people that come out of the portal don't want to go with light. I think they're afraid of retribution. Eventually, Marianne was able to banish the spirit. I felt a huge sense of peace come over me, and I felt like it went away. But I still didn't want to live there, so I ended up leaving. I now understand what it feels like to have a spirit near. It'll never go away. I don't think that experience ever leaves a person once you feel that. It's out there and it's real and it's scary. 